This is Bill Powers with MiningStockEducation.com showing you how to profit from the cyclicality of the mining sector. The obvious goal of every investor is to buy low and sell high, and the draw of the mining sector is the reoccurring opportunity to buy at extreme lows and then sell at extreme highs and thereby make outsized profits. Making 10, 50, or even 100 times or more your money is entirely possible in this sector. Gains of this magnitude are possible largely due to the cyclicality of the mining industry, which produces exaggerated highs and lows in the price of the mined commodity. So the investor desiring to profit from mining stocks must first understand why the mining business is so cyclical. Natural resource markets are cyclical for two primary reasons. They are capital and time intensive. In mining, it takes a lot of time and money to explore and discover a mineral deposit. Once the deposit is discovered, it needs to be determined if an economical mine can be built. If so, the necessary permitting and financing must be obtained in order to build the mine and corresponding infrastructure which takes several years. All of this must be done before the mining company can begin extracting and then selling the resource. This long and expensive process means that the industry does not respond quickly to supply and demand imbalances. What results are huge price swings from extreme lows to extreme highs that are not seen in most other markets. Most markets quickly adapt to changes in supply and demand and find a market equilibrium in short order. Because of this quick adaptation, there is no extreme imbalance between supply and demand and therefore pricing is relatively stable. In the mining industry, this is not so. The response time to a change in demand is extremely slow. When a mined commodity supply is low but demand increases, the price of the commodity rises. This in turn motivates the mining industry to bring more supply to market, but this first requires money, a lot of money. Because of an increase in a commodity's price, banks are now more willing to finance projects and companies can more effectively raise capital through stock offerings due to the increase of both their share price and investor interest in the upward trending sector. Therefore, more explorers begin to explore for mineral deposits. More developers develop mineral deposits into mines. More mines are brought into production. More supply is eventually brought to the market. Now when commodity prices prolongedly remain high, demand begins to wane as companies and consumers look for more affordable alternatives to the high-priced commodity and also consume less of the high-priced commodity. This is about the time when all that new supply finally makes it to the market. The long and coming increased supply, along with a decreased demand, pushes prices lower and lower and lower. And when commodity prices prolongedly decline, Mining companies cannot slow production on a dime even though demand has decreased. They've incurred too many sunk costs in order to bring more supply to the market. Many mining companies must produce and sell in order to make loan payments and just stay afloat. During this downward phase of the commodity cycle, project financing dries up. The declining commodity price results in less mineral exploration and development of mines. Poorly run miners close uneconomic mineral deposits are not developed or mined. When commodity prices remain low, supply lessens. Demand begins to increase as the commodity now is more affordable. People and companies find more uses for the now very economical resource. As demand increases, the commensurate increased supply will be a while in coming and therefore prices will rise and the cycle repeats. Rick Rule, who has made himself and his clients hundreds of millions of dollars from mastering the commodity boom-bust cycle, says, The cure for low prices is low prices, and the cure for high prices is high prices. The cyclicality of commodities makes mining stocks explosive. If one invests at a commodity's cyclical bottom, lifestyle-altering gains are possible within a matter of years. But conversely, if one invests near the top of the boom-bust cycle, one can lose a fortune, and lose a fortune quickly. Now let's look at an example from history. Our commodity is uranium. Uranium is used for nuclear weapons and other applications. But its primary market use in society is to fuel electricity-producing power plants. We will look at uranium's rise in price from the early 2000s through 2007 and see how uranium's increase affected the bottom line of uranium miners. 
From January 2002 until May 2007, the uranium price increased 14-fold. In January 2002, the spot price was $9.70 a pound, but by May 2007, it was $136 a pound. Quite a dramatic rise in just five years. As explosive as commodities themselves can be, mining stocks are even more explosive. Mining stocks are essentially leveraged plays on the price of the underlying commodity and will move two to three times or more, even much more, than the price of the underlying commodity. Let's see why. If it costs a uranium miner $20 to produce a pound of uranium in 2005, and the price per pound moves from $21 a pound to $25 a pound, the commodity increased about 19% in price. But the miner's profit margin went from $1 a pound to $5 a pound, a 400% increase, assuming the cost of production remained consistent. In reality, not all of the increase in the price of the commodity goes to the miner's bottom line as some of their production costs, such as oil or labor, may increase as well. But the increased cost of production is a fraction of the increase in their profit margin. It's going to vary between company and company, from commodity to commodity, and from different location to different location. But in 2016, I listened to an analyst report that a silver mining CEO said that for every $1 increase in the price per ounce of silver, 90 cents goes directly to the company's bottom line. This clearly illustrates how mining stocks are a leveraged play on the price of the underlying commodity. Let's look at two actual examples of how uranium's price increase from February 2005 until May 2007 affected the share price of two uranium companies. During this time period, uranium, U308, went from $21.75 a pound up to $125 a pound. That was a 475% increase in price. During the same period, Mega Uranium, a uranium explorer, went from $0.20 cents a share up to $9.63 a share, a 4,715% increase. Shares of this uranium explorer went up 10 times as much as the commodity price. Granted, there were other factors that affected the share price, but the main driving force was the dramatic increase in uranium's price and the corresponding speculative bubble it drew. To demonstrate an even more dramatic possible profit opportunity, if we were to look back to September 2003, Mega Uranium was trading for $0.04 cents a share when uranium was about $12 per pound. So from September 2003 until May 2007, Mega Uranium rose by a whopping 240 times. $10,000 invested in September 2003 would have turned into $2.4 million at Mega Uranium's share price peak in May 2007. Another uranium company I will lift up that rose dramatically during this upcycle for uranium was Energy Fuels. From December 2005 to April 2007, energy fuels rose an unbelievable 120 times in only 16 months. You can do the math, but just $1,000 invested could have turned into $120,000 quite quickly. Mining stocks, as you can see, are extremely explosive on the upside, but it should be warned that they can plummet just as quickly as they rose. Because mining stocks are a leveraged play on the price of the underlying commodity, they are even more explosive than the already explosive price of commodities, whichever direction the commodity price is moving, whether up or down. So the first step to successful investing in natural resources is discerning the cyclical bottom of a commodity cycle. This is easier said than done, but there are certain indicators successful natural resource investors look for. The first cyclical bottom indicator the investor should look for is the cost of production per unit relative to the market price per unit of a given commodity. At a cyclical bottom, very often a miner could be selling their product for less than what it costs them to produce. This is the clearest sign that the bottom has arrived or is near. The industry at this point is in liquidation. Around 2002, at the bottom of the uranium bear market, it cost miners $18 per pound to produce uranium, yet they were selling it to the market for $7 to $9 per pound. 
miners had to try to stay afloat through selling large volumes. At this point in the cycle, mining companies just tried to be the last man standing for the expected up cycle of higher prices. Either the price of the commodity at this point will rise or the commodity will stop being mined. But if there's clear future demand for the commodity, then its price must rise and the boom cycle will be initiated. The next cyclical bottom indicator is capitulation, which can be defined as a sharp sell-off of equities without any rational explanation. Shareholders sell because they can no longer endure the emotional stress of their financial losses. In the natural resource sector, capitulations are seen at the bottom of the cycle when investors who bought shares at much higher price in the cycle cannot endure their financial losses or emotional stress anymore. They have watched their portfolio continually diminish through the down cycle and they are fed up. They throw in the towel. They can't wait for the up cycle to commence anymore. They want out. In the junior natural resource sector, after investors capitulate, companies also capitulate. When the pool of potential investors to purchase stock offerings dissipates, companies who seek to raise money through private placements are willing to accept terms that are more favorable to new investors because they no longer believe that an imminent recovery will take the share prices higher. It's at this point that there is great pessimism regarding the market. Yet a diligent, contrarian investor knows that this may be the best time to buy while everything is dirt cheap. Another cyclical bottom indicator to observe is whether there is a high-volume breakout in mining stocks. This can indicate a new uptrend as investor sentiment turns bullish. Mining stock share prices often move upward out of a bottom even before the price of the underlying commodity moves upward. If this occurs after industry liquidation and after investor capitulation, it is a very good sign that smart money is pouring into the sector because they believe the bottom has occurred. There are some investors who desire to wait for a 10% move upward to confirm the beginning of an upward cycle, but some of the biggest gains for a natural resource investor occur at or near the bottom if one can time it right. If you successfully invested at or near the bottom of a commodity cycle with quality companies, in time you will have to determine your exit strategy for harvesting your gains. It's important to note that often in a commodity boom, 90% of the gains occur within the last 10% of the upward cycle. That's so important, I want to say it again. 90% of the gains occur within the last 10% of the upward cycle. One should be aware of this so as to time exiting your positions. It would be wise to harvest some gains along the ride up, but not too early. There are different strategies. Some like to pull out their initial capital after it doubles and let the remaining investment ride the cycle upward. Others wait until their initial investment triples before they recoup their initial capital and leave the rest in the market. Depending on the situation, some may add to their positions on the way up the boom cycle before they consider selling. Commodity boom cycles attract many speculators and generalist investors who would have otherwise paid no attention to the sector. This bids up the mining share prices and creates a bubble. All manias end, and as a prudent investor, you want to exit the market before the bubble pops. In order to help determine the extent of the bubble and time your exit, you should constantly be doing fundamental analysis of your individual stocks, the commodities price trend, and supply and demand fundamentals in order to determine how overpriced your stock might be. Because of the inherent volatility of the natural resource market and its high risk-reward nature, a few cautionary words of wisdom are fitting. Don't invest more than half of the amount of money you can afford to lose. Don't invest the rent or grocery money or any funds you already know you may need within the next two to three years, such as your child's tuition. Realize that if you do not time the cyclical bottom correctly, you are going to see your brokerage account value decline, perhaps greatly, before you will reap the benefits of multiplying your investment, which could be years down the road. But the bottom line is if you can discern the commodity cyclical bottom and invest in good companies at or near the cyclical bottom, you will see phenomenal and even lifestyle-altering gains. And that's what makes investing in mining stocks worth it. Thank you for watching this mining stock education video. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitter at MiningStockEDU and on the web at MiningStockEducation.com. Learn. Invest. Profit.